Hello, I'm Patrick Christie's and this is GBN Originals. And today we are looking into a story that sounds like science fiction, but is alarmingly real. Imagine a world where the Wi-Fi router in your home or the cell tower down the street could spy on you, even if you're not holding a phone. Well, a groundbreaking study has confirmed that this dystopian possibility and the implications for your privacy are staggering. A study published this month in Cornell University's journal reveals that wireless radiation, the same signals powering our Wi-Fi and mobile networks, can now be weaponized to monitor human activity without your consent. This isn't limited to tracking your phone. It works even if you're device free. Well, how does it work? Well, it's all about reconfigurable intelligent surfaces or RIS to you and me. These programmable panels manipulate electromagnetic waves to penetrate walls and track movements in non-line of sight conditions. And here's the kicker. Higher frequencies mean sharper resolution. Unlike cameras, RIS can identify multiple people in a room with precision, bypassing physical barriers like, yep, you guessed it, furniture or concrete walls. Think your home is private? Well, think again apparently. This technology could turn your living room into a fishbowl. Now, this isn't new. Declassified documents show that the US government has explored microwave surveillance for decades. Let's connect the dots, shall we? So in the 1960s, we had Project Pandora, which was a joint CIA military initiative that tested microwave radiation for psychological manipulation and covert surveillance. Then there was Project Bizarre, a classified subset that exposed primates to prolonged microwaves, causing irreversible cognitive damage. One primate's nervous system was completely scrambled. And let's not forget the Saratoga experiment, where Navy personnel were secretly bombarded with radar emissions for hours while blood samples were taken, proving that microwaves could alter human biology. These experiments weren't just about surveillance. They're about control, weren't they? And fast forward to where we are today. And the tech is light years ahead, but the ethics haven't caught up. Remember Edward Snowden? In 2013, he exposed the NSA's mass surveillance machinery and the bulk collection of phone records. All of the different ways that they could spy on you. Even, for example, if your phone was off, they apparently could listen in to every single conversation you were having. Well, the public outcry forced reforms at least publicly. But here's the shocking truth. This new study that we spoke to you about there from Cornell University suggests that today's surveillance capabilities dwarf what Snowden revealed. Back then, they needed your phone. Now, they just need the radiation humming through your walls. So there we go. RIS panels are thin programmable surfaces that redirect wireless signals like a high-tech mirror. But in the wrong hands, they become a spy tool. We're talking about through wall detection, where lower frequencies map movement and higher frequencies identify individuals. And here's the truly disturbing part. No consent is required. Unlike apps that have to ask for your permission, this technology operates silently in the background. So you literally won't even know it's happening to you until it's too late. Cameras have blind spots, but this particular set of programming, RIS, does not. And with 5G towers proliferating, the infrastructure for mass surveillance is already in place. They've already set it all up. Privacy is under siege. Combine this RIS technology with facial recognition, AI, data brokers, and you've got a perfect storm. Governments could track protesters in real time, monitor dissenters without warrants, and even exploit health data from RF-induced biometrics. This isn't paranoia, it's physics. And it's already happening. It's happening right now. So where do we go from here? Well, lawmakers must confront some tough questions. Who controls this technology? What safeguards exist to prevent abuse? How do we balance security and liberty? How do we stop ourselves from being spied on if we don't even know it's happening? How can we tell if it's happening? Well, this study from Cornell University is a wake-up call. It certainly should be. If we don't act now, the phrase privacy is dead won't be a metaphor. It'll be policy. This new surveillance capability 
raises urgent ethical and legal questions. The very networks designed to connect us could be turned into tools of unprecedented intrusion. It's not just about what governments might do. Consider the implications for corporate espionage, domestic abuse, stalking. The potential for misuse is staggering. I mean, we even saw it on a much lower level, didn't we, when people had Alexas in their home for the very first time. And some very controlling, let's be honest, mostly men, could use that as a way of domestically abusing their wives by constantly spying on them. Well, well look at this now. And also a nefarious actor. What about one of our enemies? If China or Russia got hold of this, they could be in every single one of our homes constantly, couldn't they? It's terrifying. We need to have a serious public debate about the limits of surveillance technology. Should there be regulations on the development and the deployment of this RIS technology? How can we ensure transparency when these systems are by their very nature designed to be totally invisible? Moreover, we need to think about the long-term societal impacts. If people believe that they're constantly being watched, even in their own homes, how will that change people's behaviour? Will it lead to self-censorship? Will it stifle creativity, freedom of expression? These are the questions that we need to grapple with as a society. It's also worth considering the global implications. If this technology becomes widespread, that's by the way, assuming it already isn't, how will it affect international relations? Could it be used for spying on a scale that we've never seen before? What about countries with authoritarian leanings? How might they exploit this to tighten their grip on power? We also can't ignore the potential health implications. So while the jury is still out on the long-term effects of prolonged exposure to wireless radiation, adding another layer of constant emissions to our environment certainly warrants careful study. As citizens, we need to stay informed and vigilant. We should be asking our representatives tough questions about privacy protections and demanding transparency from both government agencies and tech companies. It might be time to revisit and strengthen privacy laws, particularly those governing the collection and use of biometric data. Ultimately though, this is about more than just privacy. It's about preserving the fundamental nature of what it means to have a private life. The ability to have thoughts, conversations and experiences away from prying eyes is essential to human development, creativity and freedom. But this study that we've brought to you today is not just a technological breakthrough, it's a challenge to our very conception of privacy in the digital age. As we marvel at the capabilities, and by the way, some of this stuff is really impressive, isn't it? If you ignore all the negatives, it is really impressive that we have the capacity to do this now. The problem is it could be used negatively against all of us. And I think we must also reckon the profound implications that that could have on our society, on our freedoms, and on our future. It puts a huge amount of power into the hands of whoever controls this technology. And again, we won't even know, will we, if they're using it against us. It's a pivotal moment, this. The decisions that we make now about how to respond to these technological advancements will shape the world we live in for decades to come. We must ensure that in our quest for security and convenience, we don't inadvertently build a surveillance state that would make George Orwell's 1984 look quite quaint. This is Patrick Christie. Thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to GB News YouTube for more.